our next speaker is Sam Partee from Redis. He's a principal applied AI engineer, and his key phrase to describe himself is curious, which I find very interesting, especially given that if you ask hiring managers for the most desirable features and attributes of a specific type of data scientist, usually what you'll hear are some of the softer skills, things like ability to communicate or understand business problems, and curiosity is one of the top named items that hiring managers are looking for. So welcome, Sam, to the stage. Thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. Hopefully everybody's still awake. All right. My name is Sam Partee. Thanks for the introduction. I'm here to talk about AI-powered search and vector databases. So first I'll ask the question, who's had an argument in the last month ended by just Google it? Yeah, come on, more of you, definitely more of you. It happens all the time. Search is ingrained in our lives. Almost every day you search something. So what I'm talking about today is going to build up from the basics. It's going to be really simply how do I get similarity searches with vector embeddings from the absolute basics, from what are vector embeddings to what are vector databases, and then how do I put this into production with some really simple demos that show the value. So first, what are vector embeddings? Well, they commonly represent unstructured data. So this could be images, videos, texts, uh, audio, just like you heard before. And they're usually high dimensional. So that means 384 dimensions, 768 dimensions. And they're created through passing, uh, by passing unstructured data through machine learning models. So this could be transformer models, VAEs, et cetera. You've heard about a lot of them today. But what's really cool about today is that now you have off-the-shelf models, like hugging face transformers, that you in about, let's see, nine lines of code can take unstructured data like texts and create vector embeddings. I don't know who else remembers the days when you used to have to create a custom PyTorch hook to do this, but it was much more painful. And this will literally download that model and create those vector embeddings on the fly. So going off Joel's talk earlier, this is as simple as it gets. And this is something that I get really enthusiastic about. I describe myself as curious. Um, this is an area I'm incredibly curious, curious about because of how simple and easy it is to get started. People I know that aren't data scientists could do this because they've done a little bit of work in Python. They're software engineers in Python, and they can get started with this. So that's definitely a theme of this talk, is the simplicity of how you actually can get started with this. So how do you actually use these vector embeddings? So similarity search, we'll give an example here that's actually ripped right off the Hugging Face API page. Um, these are three sentences that we're going to turn into vector embeddings. So today is a sunny day. That is a very happy person. That is a very happy dog. And we're going to project these into an overly simplified vector space that you see below that I probably should have made bigger in the slides. Um, but then we're going to calculate the distance between those vectors by using one of the four methods on the right. This example, we'll use cosine similarity. But you can imagine just calculating, like mathematically, the distance between two vectors. So once again, we're keeping this simple in the fact that it's using these high-level terms, but it's still simple in its methodology. So then we're going to enter a query vector. That is a happy person. And our goal here is to calculate how similar that sentence, that piece of unstructured data, is to the rest of the unstructured data in our data set. So here you'll see that is a very happy person, that is a very happy dog, and that in today is a sunny day make up our data set. And each of those blue dotted lines are the cosine similarity between the query vector that is a happy person and each respective sentence. You'll see that the most common one, unsurprisingly, is that is a very happy person. And this will mimic, uh, actually, the results in the bottom right you see there are actually directly from the Hugging Face API. 
But if you're curious, you can uh, reproduce all of these by going to the blog that you see there, which actually will outline a lot more of this talk. Um, I only have 15 minutes, so the blog does a much better job. Um, and what you can see is actually how to do this in pure Python in the Hugging Face API, and then later, as you'll see, in Redis. So vector search has a number of use cases. Um, part of my job is actually implementing these for customers. And we see all types of things that people want to do with this, whether it's visual search for products, whether it's natural language search for document retrieval, um, or you know, anomaly detection, threat detection, recommendation systems for users. Um, it could be just about anything that you can take unstructured data, create vector embeddings from, and then create an index and search over. So as you've seen, the vector embedding creation that you saw earlier with that hugging face piece of code on the very first slide is incredibly simple, and that makes up the first half of this slide. But if you're going to take this into production, how are you going to use this in a service? And so you need something like a vector database to hold these vectors and actually serve them to your platform, do things like create you an index, provide you with distance metrics, actually serve that data to some endpoint. This is what that process looks like. But what is a vector database? Because that's also kind of a loaded term. Well, in general, it's a purpose-built data store. It has indexing methods. It has distance metrics. Some of the common ones that you see there are flat, like k-nearest neighbors, or approximate ones like hi hierarchical, hierarchical small navigatable worlds. I always mess that up. Um, and each of these vector databases that you can use need at least these three tenets. It needs to be fast, reliable, and scalable. It needs to have low latency reads and writes. It needs to be highly available, and it needs to be scalable to grow with the growing size of your business or your data set. Redis now can actually handle this type of data. So we've introduced a vector data type. And in our existing Redis search module, if you're not familiar with the module ecosystem, it's essentially pluggable uh, ways to make Redis have different types of functionality. Um, but Redis search is one of those offering things like full text search, um, geographic search, tag-based search, which tons of people use for tracking numbers or products or what have you. But now you can also use them for vector search. And what's cool is that you can use them together in these things called hybrid queries, so that you can actually say, um, I like these shoes, but they're technically size 11 men's, and I want size 11 women's. So you click the you know, women's gender tag, and that filters everything down. And then you can do a vector search with that men's shoe just because you like the way it looks. So this provides users a whole new type, a whole new way of actually performing search than they have been able to before with something like lexical search or BM25. We provide a number of cap uh, indexing methods. So as I mentioned, H and S, H, S, and W, flat as K nearest neighbors, as well as a couple of those distance metrics that you saw on the previous screen. So to ground this, I wanted to show actual demos. So things that have code on GitHub, things that you can actually go visit today and use and see how they work. So first, it's this fashion product finder application. And what you'll see here is very similar embedding creation pipeline. Um, and in this case, we're using sentence transformers as well as ResNet 18 and image to vec to create our vector embeddings that are loaded into Redis. We then create an index, HSNW in this case, um, HNSW, excuse me, and then we serve that with a very, single, a very simple single page application architecture, which this entire demo is deployed in two containers one Redis Enterprise container, and one for the single page application. Um, all of this code's on GitHub at the link below, um, but I'll show you uh, what an example from this, this code base actually looks like and how kind of simple this code base actually is. If you're familiar with asynchronous Python, this will make a lot of sense. If you're not, just think about it like how to do an HTTPS request asynchronously in Python. And in this case, all we do is retrieve one of those products whether it's the image, it's the image in this case, but whether it's the image or the metadata of that product doesn't really matter. We retrieve that by requesting it from Redis. We create a query and then use that vector that we've created and loaded into our database to go and get all of the similar products according to the image of that product. So just as I described earlier with the example of a shoe, 
you can do so with this type of query. And so what I'll actually show here is the application, which I'll give you the link to in a minute, if you promise not to spam the button and <laughs> take it down. Um, but here, we'll actually show this, uh, this Nike men's shoe here. And you can actually do search by image. And so you'll be able to click this, and you'll see very similar shoes appear. And it's not necessarily all Nike shoes either. You know, in typical tag-based search, you might click Nike and then have only a little mic trouble. Um, and then what you'll actually see also on this page is the similarity score, so one minus the cosine similarity. Um, and so that's the blue number that you see down on the right. Each of these buttons, you can do either the text-based search with the text embeddings or the visual search with the image-based embeddings. One cool point uh, to point out about this is you can also do apply filters and see how the work. And also, uh, just to point out as well, that these aren't all Nikes, like I said. There's actually a Puma one that, you know, the algorithm, this particular at 18 variant, this Nike uh, men's shoe. I should have shown those. So this is the link. You can actually go and try this out today. It's hosted. It's not optimized for mobile, so try to use it on a computer. But you can actually go and click through this um, and try it out yourself. And all of this code, once again, is on GitHub in the Redis Ventures GitHub. So you can check it out there or just come up to me after the talk. Um, one more I wanted to be able to show is our archive search capability. So this is for archive papers. Um, Carpathy put out a great uh, archive sanity demo, so this is kind of in line with that. But we're actually going to use vector search on the abstracts um, with sentence transformers from Hugging Face with the same application architecture to be able to do document retrieval based on user natural language, so simple natural language. In this case, the first one, we look up deep financial models, which aren't a thing. But the point is, is that users are imperfect, right? We don't always search the perfect thing. In a lexicographical search like VM25, this probably doesn't return anything useful. But in this case, it actually has an understanding of that language that you're putting into it and is able to return multiple different papers that are all relevant in the machine learning space that also have to do with deep learning models and finance, which would have been a better way to say it. But once again, users aren't perfect and they don't search the right thing all the time. So this is a great way to enable your users to have that kind of fault tolerance in their search capabilities. Once again, predicting medical diagnosis, not even about machine learning. But yet, everything in here that you'll see is a machine learning paper. Obviously, this, paper, this data set is all machine learning papers. Um, you'll see every single one of them has to do with using machine learning or deep learning to predict medical diagnoses. So you see some for cancer, you see some for COVID-19, particularly relevant right now. Um, and this demo is also available on request, we just didn't host this one. So if you want, we uh, have a computer with it up if you want to come check it out. Lastly, I want to get to this, which is uh, we have a partner in this space who actually did a ton of work and built an entire platform on top of our vector search capability and really enabled new users that aren't necessarily, um, you know, data scientists at heart or data engineers to be able to benefit from this vector similarity capability. So they have this amazing GUI. It's like Tableau and, you know, it's, it's kind of like Tableau and Jupyter had a baby in a sense. There's reporting functionality. There's all these kinds of observable dashboards about vectors. And most of it is no code with a low code option to use the API and do ingest from there. Um, this is Relevance AI, and the CEO, Jackie Co flew all the way from Australia to be here and answer questions. So please go say hey to him and thank him for being here. Lastly, thank you to Mark and Southern Data Science Conference. This has been a blast, and we're grateful to be here. Thank you all. I definitely talked over the time limit. Are there any questions? Do we even have time? I can't see that direction, honestly. The light is blinding. <laughs> oh, hey, yep, there you are. Hi. Uh, hey, one of the use cases for the vector search is yeah. to... Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one of the use cases for the vector search is to support availability updates when you need to have a filter for availability, and it needs to be uh, updated uh, very frequently, almost in real time. 
So do, the, do your system support the frequent updates? Yeah, so that's, really, that's a really great question. So Redis at heart is a cache. Most people actually know it as a web cache, supporting you know, the, the single digit millisecond latencies that uh, you would expect from an in-memory cache. And so kind of on paper, we already had that benefit. In a lot of ways, now doing the vector search, we kind of are you know, benefiting from the fact that we already have a lot of that capability and kind of inter enterprise grade update scheduling, maintainability, you know, reliability all kind of built in already, which is a huge benefit of building on an open source community that's as mature as Redis. Um, so, you know, for that way, you know, we also do work with companies like Feast and Tecton to do, you know, feature updates and materialization. We're integrated into those platforms. And so that also helps with the kind of materialization schedules as well, if that's kind of more what you meant. But happy to also connect when I get off the stage, too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.